I realized after making my second scenario video that I needed to go back and talk briefly about what's on my charts. And I'll release that scenario video after I get this one uploaded. Um, basically, there's several schools of thought on what should and shouldn't be on charts. Uh, from different types of candles to no candles at all. And there's even disagreements about which indicators you should use or whether you should use them at all. And there are those people who talk about something called analysis paralysis from having too many indicators or too many lines or whatever on a chart, which can make it harder to make decisions. And it is true, having a lot of things on charts can make things a little bit more difficult for you. But in general, whatever works for you is what you should do. I've seen some traders who have a lot of lines on charts and they're pretty successful at it. Um, so if that works for you and you can see through a lot of lines, then that is something you should do. Um, so for me, up until recently, I had four monitors and I had charts on all my monitors. Uh, in some cases, it was because I was watching different markets. There was a time I traded not only the S&P, I would trade like crude oil and gold and I would have um, I would have different charts on on the different monitors. But I've basically moved to only trading the S&P just because it's easier once you kind of narrow your focus down to a single product. Um, only recently I attempted to trade on one monitor and that didn't work for me. I wasn't getting enough information. So I went back to two monitors and on these monitors, I look at um, 10 different charts. Of those 10 charts, seven of them are S&P 500 charts. Uh, technically, yes, yeah, seven of them and three of them are different markets. And I'm going to run it down for you right now. Hopefully you can see my cursor when I'm moving it around. I'm going to start with this chart up here. This is a daily chart that I look at. Um, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So the daily chart I'm looking at just because I wanna have an overview of the overall market. I wanna see, you know, right now on, um, what is it, September 28th, 2023 we are in a multi-day downtrend so i'm just going to kind of let that inform me we have um big range on several candles we're um balancing in certain areas so i'm just letting overall what's going on in the market on a day time frame kind of inform me how i'm going to trade and just after observing the markets for a very long time and seeing multiple scenarios, just seeing how a candle is shaping up for the day can give you a good um, indication as to how you might trade today. Uh, on this daily chart, I have something down here called a two period rate of change. This was introduced to me by uh, trader Linda Rashke. And um, to explain how she uses this would be very complicated, so I'm not going to get into it just yet. On the daily, I also have the Keltner channel, just to let us know if we're getting a little extended, a little far away from this 20 period EMA. And as you can say, see, we're outside the Keltner channel um, as of a couple days ago, and we're starting to kind of pull back in towards the EMA. I believe that is somewhat discussed in the um, scenario video that I released yesterday, which is the uh, the Keltner reversal. Uh, the Keltner reversal is primarily a scalp trade. I don't use it for, um, I don't use it on the daily chart. I, I don't know if it can or cannot be used. I, I don't use it that way though. But besides that, I have the uh, five SMA, the 20 EMA, and I also have the 50, the 100, and the 200. Um, EMAs just to, again some of these don't appear until we get into a situation where we need them so in the case of the 200 the 100 the 50 they're not normally on my chart when the market is going up but once we go down and we start crossing I want to see when we're gonna hit these levels and that's why I put them on my chart uh, moving on just below that I have the New York Stock Exchange volume that's this right here so each bar here represents a half hour of volume uh, based on the New York Stock Exchange stocks. 
um, if yesterday's volume is bigger than the day before or the, a day's volume is bigger, the first half hour is bigger than the days before, that is an indication that you know trading might be pretty good that day. So here in the case of uh, September 21st, we see this volume candle going up here, which is much bigger than the previous day's volume. So let's look at the daily chart and just see if that uh, corroborates that more volume uh, will lead to a better trading day. So let's see here. Okay, so yeah, that does corroborate, that does track because we have a very long candle on the 21st. So we know we had more volume that day. That means there's more potential for bigger moves and more potential for profit. So watching that first half hour volume of the New York Stock Exchange can really give a really good clue. Um, that trick I've heard from um, a few different traders, but the main two that I learned it from would be, again, Linda Rashke and also Jim Dalton, who is a market profile uh, expert, so to speak. He says not to call him a market profile trader, but uh, yeah, Jim is the market profile guru or mentor in my book. Um, here we have the two minute chart of the S&P 500 and right next to it, the five minute chart of the S&P 500. I keep the two minute up because of those scalp trades that I've shown you, both the, um, the two candle pullback and the um, Keltner channel reversal. I like to take those on the two just because the risk is a little lower um, and I can you know, be out of them relatively quickly. And also the two minute chart is a good chart to kind of um, lead the way for what we might do on a five minute chart. So if something's setting up on the five and I'm looking at it, I might enter on the two because it might give me a slightly better entry. The oscillator on this is the 310 oscillator, which is um, a Linda Rashke oscillator. And um, the oscillator just gives us an idea of what the momentum is. So we can see here, as of right now, which is about almost nine o'clock PM, there is a lot of downward momentum. First of all, we got all these red candles happening on both the two and the five. Look at this, this is just straight down, riding the Keltner channel down. That's this, this kind of green area here. And also we got, um, good momentum so had you gotten in at the right time this is a tray that you would want to stick with because the momentum could conceivably keep you in the trade longer um right below the two minute and five minute of the s p i have the russell 2000 and then right here the nasdaq now i use the nasdaq kind of like a fullback or a blocker I know that if this thing is moving ahead of the S&P, it's probably going to drag the S&P down with it. And the main reason for that is because of stocks like Apple, which um, are weighted much heavier than other stocks. So if Apple's going down, then usually the NASDAQ is getting pulled down. And if the NASDAQ is getting pulled down by Apple, then that's pulling the S&P down. I would say the main difference is that the a lot of people trade the NASDAQ. They like the way it moves, but for me, it's a little whippy. It moves around too fast. And mostly it does that because it's a thinner market and there are a few people trading it. So it kind of jumps around a bit much uh, for my taste. The S&P is a much more orderly trade, but you know, nothing against the NASDAQ. A lot of people like to trade it. It moves really fast and you can get your profits pretty fast on the NASDAQ. The Russell, um, I don't necessarily use it for anything more than corroborating what's going on here. Sometimes the NASDAQ and the S&P are doing the same thing and the Russell is not doing the same thing. I'll give more weight to the NASDAQ, but when all three of these things are doing the, the same thing, then that's definitely a go with. You wanna be in any trade where all three of these markets, the Russell, the NASDAQ, and the S&P are doing the exact same thing. You definitely wanna be in that. Over here, I have um, on the top, this top um, set of candles is the S&P 500 30 minute chart. 
and below it is the NASDAQ 30 minute chart. It's just that these are 24 hour charts and it just kind of shows the overall flow of the market. That's one of the reasons why, what I'll say about the 30 is, the 30 gives you a better chance of making larger profit than some of these um, smaller time frames. With the smaller time frames, you can scalp, you can be in and out quick, but if you find a setup on the 30, then you would be in the trade longer and your profit potential is higher. Also, there's some tricks on the 30 that hold up very well and um, I'll show you when we get to my next chart what the um, the reason why I trade the 30. So let me just move myself over here. Just in case you couldn't see that this chart here. I think I made it bigger though. Anyway, this is that New York Stock Exchange volume chart. So I keep that on there. Things like the volume chart are called market internals, which are just things you use to show the internal workings of the market. There's some mar other market internals. I have a chart here. I'll just click to it real quick. There's the 30 minute. This is a tick chart. This is volume. There are things like called the advanced decline that shows how many stocks are advancing versus how many are declining. I used to use these more. I don't use them anymore. The only thing I use now is this 30 minute um, 30 minute NYSE volume chart. So let me go back. All right, so now I'm going to my second monitor, which is the one that's kind of right in my face and the one I actually trade from. So I'm just gonna go to the right one first. So here is the S&P 500 30 minute chart, RTH, which is regular trading hours. So. I like to see where the market is in relation to yesterday. So this is the, the reason why this is not moving is because this chart only moves from 930 to 415 when the market is actually um, trading during regular hours. And I like to see where we trade in relation to yesterday. So this yellow line down here is yes, the previous day is low, previous day is mid, previous day is high. Uh, in the case of um, today, we opened in the range of yesterday. We traded out of it. We came back down. We danced around the high, but we did not go back down below it. So those things mean something as you are trading. Those give you clues as to what type of trading you should be doing for the day. Um, there's more to it than that, but that's the basic gist. And also, I don't sometimes the volume candles help, but sometimes they're a distraction. So let me just bounce back to the volume candles. So yeah, sometimes the volume candles are a distraction, which is the reason why I like to look at candles that don't have volume in them, because I can see the shape of the move a little bit better without the volume candle. So I like looking at them both. And then last but not least, the chart number 10 is something called market profile. Now, market profile is probably one of the least understood styles of trading, but it gives you a really good idea of where you are in the market at a glance. So the great thing about market profile is I can walk in to a market, you know, like at 940 and I can instantly know what we're doing based on the profile. Without going into too many details, the profile is basically based on letters and each letter represents a half hour of trading. So A period is is um, A period is from 9:30 to 10, B period is from 10 to 10:30, etc, etc, etc. So let me just stretch it out here. So this is A period, B period. And they're similar to candles, but with market profile, you can orient yourself. Um, you can orient yourself as to what the market is doing at a glance. And there are some, there's much more to market profile. I can't possibly explain it now. Uh, in the link, I'm going to uh, link to Jim Dalton's YouTube channel. He's got both a new channel and an old channel, and he's got several books. And the older books 
aren't as um, aren't as relevant today, but they still contain a lot of information. And market profile, I mean, it's it's underutilized, but I use it a lot. I would love to be able to just trade with market profile alone, but like Jim does, but I'm not able to do that. I'm, I use uh, market profile in conjunction with candles because candles tell me the mood of the market, but profile tells me where we are in the market. Uh, the other thing I'll say about profile is this white and green is the day, the day um, trading, and this purple and green is overnight. So typically you're coming in and you're comparing overnight to the day. The other thing is that you can do is you have the actual profile and you can also split the profile out to see each period on its own. And there are various trades that set up using the profile and you know, maybe I'll get into that at some point in the future. So that's my charts. Um, I use oscillators, I use the two period rate of change, I use moving averages, and I use levels a lot. Especially on the market profile, you see this red level here corresponds with the 200 period moving average on the daily chart. The green corresponds with the five. I have yesterday's high, yesterday's low, yesterday's half back. So there's a lot of different levels that you can um, trade on the market profile. And levels I use primarily as targets, not necessarily as places to enter a trade. And that's my charts, and hopefully that gives you an idea of what I'm doing, and um, I'll see you in the next one.